Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Jamaica News in Review Man dies in motor vehicle mishap in Brompton. A man died in a motor vehicle mishap in Brompton, St. Elizabeth, early Saturday morning. The deceased, Tishon James of Darliston, Westmoreland, was employed to a funeral home in Newmarket, St. Elizabeth. It's reported that Mr. James was at a wake in an area known as Square Road in Brompton when about 4.30 a.m. a truck was being reversed and the driver lost control. It collided with a car in which James was sleeping. The car overturned and slid into a ditch with the truck atop it. Mr. James died at the scene. The driver of the truck was one for prosecution. Buses destroyed in garage fire off Washington Boulevard. At least three buses were destroyed in a fire at a garage on Davidson Avenue in St. Andrew on Friday evening. Reports were that about 5.30 a.m., firefighters were alerted to the blaze at the location of Washington Boulevard in the parish. The firefighters were able to extinguish the fire, but not before it destroyed the buses that were parked at the premises. Garfield McLaughlin, district officer at the Jamaica Fire Brigade, told reporters that the owner of the car said repairs were being conducted on a vehicle when it caught fire. As to details, we have not gotten that complete as to what started the fire, he said. There were no reported injuries in the incident. At 538, we received a call of building on fire, 14 Davidson Avenue. We responded immediately. On arrival, we observed that it was a garage where two buses were seen on fire. We immediately got into operation and was able to control the fire and bring it to a complete extinction. Um, the damage has not yet been ascertained. We are doing some more investigation and we are seeking the assistance of some of the persons who are involved in terms of the owners for the vehicle. As soon as that is available, we'll be able to give a better calculation as to the cost of the fire overall. All right? We were informed by the owner of the premises that they were working on a vehicle when unfortunately it caught fire. As to the details, we have not gotten a complete as to what exactly started the fire. But as we said, we are carrying out our investigation and as soon as we have completed, we will update. Portland records first murder for 2023. Portland on Saturday recorded its first murder for 2023 following the shooting death of a man in the farming community. Of Skibble shortly after 9.45 p.m. Police sources have confirmed the incident and say the deceased, whose identity has not yet been ascertained, only recently moved into Skibble community. The police say preliminary reports suggest that the man was among a group of young men standing near a shop when men drove up in a vehicle and opened gunfire. The deceased was hit and later pronounced dead by a medical doctor. DPP reacts to injunction filed challenging extension of her tenure. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, KC, says the office is not short of successors. However, there are a number of party projects that are incomplete. Ms. Llewellyn was reacted to a suit file in the Supreme Court seeking an order to bar the government from extending her appointment. Attorney at law, Hugh Wellman, who filed the document challenging the extension of the DPP's tenure, is asking the court to rule that Ms. Llewellyn not be allowed to operate in her current post when she reaches the age for early retirement. He had also challenged in her latest extension of tenure, stating that the documents were never gazetted. Speaking at the Rotary Club of Kingston weekly meeting on Friday, Ms. Wellin made it clear that there are seniors among the carriage of 58 attorney who are efficient and capable of filing the post. Ms. Wellin was granted a three-year extension in July 2023 as she was due to retire in September 2020 at age 60. Prime Minister Anja Holness, in announcing the extension of her tenure, said she performed well over her 12 years in office. Then opposition leader Peter Phillips has objected to the extension. Father son found dead in St. Catherine. Police in St. Catherine are probing a double murder after the bodies of a father and his son were found in a cane field in Ty Dixon Lewis Valley on Monday afternoon. The deceased have been identified as 59-year-old tractor driver Michael Sloot and his son, Michael Sloot Jr., both from Union District. Information which in reported is that, about 2 p.m. on Sunday, the senior suit employed a tractor driver to plow sections of family-owned land. The tractor driver returned today and did not see the senior suit. After a lengthy wait, he began to walk the property in search of them. 
This was when he stumbled on the lifeless bodies of the father and son in the mid-afternoon. The senior sleuth was dressed in blue overall and black shoes and was lined face down. His son body was seen lying about 40 feet away with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to his back. He was dressed in a green shirt, grey shorts and brown and white shoes. Fiery 3 vehicle crash in Clarendon causes traffic pileup. A fiery 3 vehicle crash along the Bustamante Highway in Fort Pass Clarendon had caused a traffic pileup, the police reported. Reporters understand that the crash, which occurred about 5 p.m., involved a Jamaica Defense Force JDF unit, a truck, and a Honda CRV. Sources say the CRV was reduced to ashes shortly after the vehicles burst into flames. Head of Operations of the Clarendon Police Division, Deputy Superintendent Cardoso, said no major injuries were reported. The Bustamante Highway is listed as a crash hotspot by the National Road Council of Jamaica. Over 100 rounds of ammunition found in fridge in Papine. The police have seized a large quantity of assorted rounds of ammunition in Back Road, Highlight View, Papine in St. Andrew on Monday. Reports are that about 11.30 a.m., a team conducted a targeted raid. The premises was searched. During the search, 99.222 Remington rifle cartridges, one 5.5G magazine, and one Simiton Western 9mm magazine were found in a bag in an old refrigerator. No one was taken into custody. Investigations continue. They find them high bad. Scores of traffic violators had to dig deep in their pockets to pay hefty fines under the new World Traffic Act at the St. Catherine Parish Court yesterday. Fines as high as $37,000 or 10 days in prison were imposed by presiding judge Nicole Kelly. The offenses included disobeying a police signal, no driver's license, no insurance coverage, operating a vehicle contrary to the terms of the license, unlicensed motorcycle, and no registration plate affixed. They find them high bad, it wicked palmy, is the last money me draw for compare, motorist Delbert Chambers said. The judge commended the Kaisel police for their efficiency in their case presentations. Government set to announce postponement of local government elections. The local government elections will be officially postponed for a third time. The Minister of Local Government and World Development, Desmond McKenzie, will reportedly make the announcement in the House of Representatives. McKenzie will present for a debate the representation of the People's Postponement of Elections to Municipal Corporation and City Municipalities Act. The bill to postpone the local polls will be tabled and taken. In January last year, the Parliament voted to temporarily modify the representation of the people, postponement of elections to municipal corporations and city municipalities act to allow for local government elections to be postponed for a further 12 months. They were due to be held this month. The local polls were previously delayed from November 2020 and simply because of the health risk posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. This was despite the fact that general elections were held just two months prior in September of that year. The government has faced criticism for the latest postponement, including that from the influential private sector organization of Jamaica and the opposition People's National Party. Two killed, 12 injured in Mandeville crash. Two people died as a result of injuries they sustained in a two-vehicle crash on the Winston Jones Highway near Mandeville on Tuesday night. Twelve others have been hospitalized one in critical condition. The crash happened shortly before 9 p.m. and involved two taxis. Police and firefighters were on the scene. A section of the Winston Jones Highway has been cornered off in the vicinity of the mud lake following the crash. Molten White, absolutely innocent, says attorney. Alicia Moulton White, the former vice president of group marketing for Sajikor Group Jamaica, facing fraud allegations, is absolutely innocent according to her attorney, Mata Hyatt. In December, multiple charges were laid against Moulton White to include conspiracy to defraud, unlawfully making device, and data available for the commission of an offense, engaging in transactions that involve a criminal offense, and receiving stolen property. According to her lawyer, Moulton White was implicated for $661,000 deposit in her account in August 2022. He is adamant 
that his client has no knowledge of the funds. Her lawyer stated that Molten White is eager to clear her name. Stricker bail conditions were imposed Tuesday on Molten White along with her three co-accused in the multi-million dollar fraud case involving the financial institution. All four have been slumped with multiple fraud charges including larceny of a servant and conspiracy to defraud. Molten White, her sister, Tricia Moulton, Tyson Samuels, and Malika McLeod were ordered by senior parish judge Louis Ancole Montague to report to the nearest police station on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They were also ordered to surrender all traveling documents and a stop order was placed on all ports. In response to the bail conditions, Matty Hyde said, Well, I am satisfied with the conditions. She is on bail. She got station bill in the sum of one million and that remains. Her travel documents have been taken and that is standard. Here goes some. And I want to make it clear that Miss Alicia Moulton White is innocent in this matter and she is eager to clear her name. Can you say that again for me? You said that she's innocent. When was this Absolutely money deposited? Innocent. Okay, when was the money deposited? This money is the money was deposited about in August of last year. Right, and so she has no knowledge of this money, and she did not authorize these monies, and she is absolutely 100% innocent in this matter. We think and believe that the prosecution is on a fishing expedition as it, rela as it regards to Miss Alicia Moulton White. Okay, what's the state of mind of your client right now? Well, she's anxious as anyone would be in these circumstances. But she remains faithful in God and she knows that she's innocent and she's eager to clear her name. You, uh, she made mentions or intentions of seeking to travel overseas to Canada, am I correct? Uh, no, no comment on that at this time. Okay, alright. Are you satisfied the conditions, sir? That's what I said. Repeat that, please. Are you satisfied the conditions? Bail conditions. Well, I'm satisfied with the conditions. She's on bail. She got station bail in the sum of $1 million and that remains travel. Um, her, 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 her travel documents have been taken. That is a standard, and she has to report. So I'm satisfied. There was, there was some confusion about her, her present address. On her present address. No, no confusion about her present address. Her present address is what it is. Mr. Hyatt, you said that money was deposited in August, but uh, we heard you requested um, video footage for the September 21st, 22nd, and 31st. <laughs> What's the discrepancy there? The well, that, that's, the discretion, that's, the, that's the discrepancy that we want to clarify, right? She has no knowledge of the monies that were placed into her account. She did not authorize any money to be placed into her account, cash deposits like that. And so we want to see who it is placed these monies into her account. This is a multi-million dollar fraud and she's only charged for $661,000. So I don't know where the prosecution is going with it, but we will see. She's eager to clear her name and that's what we want to do. Was she aware of the money being deposited? No, no, comment, that, no comment at this time on that. In total, right. for, all, for a woman, woman, is it $69 million or is it $65 million? Can you say? I was told the allegations are $65 million. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Local government elections postponed until February 28, 2024. The local government elections that were due in seven days have been postponed for the third time until February 28, 2024. The announcement was made by Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond McKenzie in the House of Representatives Tuesday afternoon. The elections, which was constitutionally due every four years, were last held in November 2016. They were due to be held in November 2020, but was postponed as the country was still in the grips of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was notwithstanding the fact that general elections were held two months earlier in September of that year. Among other things, Mackenzie is planning and opening the debate on the representation of the people, postponement of elections to municipal corporation and city municipalities act, cited that the country's economic recovery post-COVID, while good, was still fragile. He also said the consultations were still underway to make Portmore the country's 15th parish. The parliamentary opposition has stated that it will not support the latest postponement, which leader of the opposition business in the House, Philip Paul, will question in the real reasons for the postponement. He asked if another postponement will be sought if the country's economic recovery is not where the government wants it to be in the next year. Paul also cited that at least 15 divisions were without representation, 
some for as long as four years for various reasons, including the death of sitting councillors. He also argued that the government's indifference treatment of local government was in part to blame for the poor voter turnout in elections, including general elections. Hairdresser among three arrested for scamming. A 19-year-old hairdresser was among three persons arrested and charged in Hanover on Tuesday for lottery scamming offences in two operations carried out by investigators assigned to the Lottery Scam Task Force, which is based in Montego Bay, St. James. According to police reports, the three persons, who are all from addresses in Orange Bay, Hanover, were charged with possession of identity information and possession of access devices. In the first of the two operations, which was carried out at approximately 4.30 a.m., a two-bedroom house dwelling, which was occupied by a man and a woman, were searched. During the search, two cellular phones belonging to the man were found to be populated with names, addresses, telephone numbers, and bank information of persons residing overseas. The man and the woman, identified as 27-year-old Dino Vassiano and 19-year-old hairdresser Amor Simit of Church Lane in Orange Bay. The court date for their first appearance in court has not been finalized. Later, about 9 a.m., 27-year-old Calvin White, an auto repairman of Wharf Road in Orange Bay, was arrested and charged following an operation at his home. During a search of his house, two cellular phones with photographs of lead sheet were found. Further search revealed micro Excel files populated with names, addresses, telephone numbers, and bank information of persons residing overseas. Lottery scamming remains a serious problem in this parish despite the success we have been arresting scammers, said Superintendent Sharon Beepert, the commanding officer for Hanover Police Division. Last year, we arrested 23 persons for scamming, and so far, six have been convicted. In addition, we dismantled three major scamming syndicates in the parish. Despite initiatives such as the establishment of the Jamaican operations linked to telemarketing, task force, and the extradition of several scammers to face justice in the United States, scamming continues to flourish as scammers find new ways to beat the system. The JAL Task Force, which was formally launched in 2009, is made up of the Immigration Customs Enforcement Division of the United States Homeland Security Department, the United States Embassy in Jamaica, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and individuals from a number of state agencies including Customs, the Passport, Immigration and Citizen Agency, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, and the Financial Investigations Division of the Ministry of Finance and Public Service. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the